The Korean War in the canon of history is sometimes considered a forgotten conflict. For the soldiers who served in Korea, World War II may have been fresh in the mind. My own grandfather served in Korea, and he referred to a story about a regiment in the army known as the Glorious Gloucesters. Today we're going to investigate the remarkable story of this regiment, and especially their greatest battle, when 650 members of the Gloucestershire Regiment were up against 10,000 Chinese soldiers. So join us as we investigate an incredible story of bravery and military success. Remember if you do enjoy these videos, please support the channel by subscribing. In the British Army, the unique Glorious Gloucesters wear badges on the front and also on the rear of their beret. They earned this right during a significant battle against the might of Napoleon's army in Alexandria in Egypt in 1801. Although hugely outnumbered, the 28th North Gloucestershire Regiment of Foot had their line broken by French cavalry. The order was given for their front to continue fighting whilst heavily engaged still, and also for their rear to turn around standing back to back to battle the French army. Although fighting front and back, the regiment remarkably and successfully managed to hold their line. Later the British would accept the surrender of the French garrison a few months later. The Gloucesters are a regiment that has earned battle honours in many conflicts across the world, including in India, Crimea and South Africa. During the First World War, the regiment won over 80 distinctive battle honours, including seeing action at the First Battle of Ypres, the Battle of Luz and the Second Battle of Passchendaele. During the Second World War, they would see action during the evacuation of Dunkirk and would also take part in D-Day, landing at Gold Beach. They would see much action in the Battle of Normandy and would advance throughout Belgium and the Netherlands. Also the Gloucesters would have a role in fighting in Burma. After its return to the UK in 1949, the 1st Battalion was assigned to the 29th Independent Infantry Brigade Group and on the 3rd of November 1950, the battalion arrived in Korea following the outbreak of the Korean War. At the beginning of December 1950, the 29th Brigade provided the rearguard during the retreat that followed the United Nations Forces defeat at the Battle of Chongchong River. On the 16th of February 1951, the Gloucesters successfully assaulted Hill 327, south of the River Han. They were backed up by mortar fire and also 17 Centurion tanks, but did see a loss of 10 soldiers killed and 29 wounded. For all of the history in the regiment, its greatest battle would be at Imjin River in 1951. They were virtually annihilated by a colossal Chinese army that came in like, in the words of Captain Sir Anthony Farrah Hockley, a swollen wave breaking on the shore. In March 1951, a UN counter-offensive pushed the Chinese back and recaptured Seol. This was the city's fourth conquest in a year, leaving the city in ruins. As the winter cleared, the UN forces came in close to the 38th parallel, the boundary between Soviet and American occupation zones. In spring, they advanced further north to create a buffer in front of Seoul, and in April the Chinese counter-attacked, aiming to break into the city. The 29th British Independent Infantry Group would hold a sector of the UN line. They were commanded by Brigadier Tom Brodie, and it comprised of the 1st Battalion, the Royal Northumberland Fusiliers, the 1st Battalion of the Gloucester Regiment, who were commanded by Lieutenant Colonel James Kahn, the Belgian Battalion, and the 1st Battalion, the Royal Ulster Rifles, then made up the rest of this brigade. Supporting the group would be the tank squadron of the 8th King's Royal Irish Hussars, 25 pounder guns of the 45th Field Regiment Royal Artillery, and 4.2 inch mortars of the 170th Independent Mortar Battery. The Chinese offensive, commanded by General Pen Duhai, involved 300,000 troops attacking over a 40 mile front. In Brodie's sector of the line, his men faced three divisions of General Yan Desi's 19th Army. As mentioned earlier, the brigade were holding a wide defensive position behind the Imjim River. The Gloucesters occupied a vital part of this front, aside the main track to Seol. For days a Chinese attack had been expected, and on the 22nd of April, small parties of the enemy were observed approaching and then crossing the wide river bed. On the left flank, the Gloucesters were heavily engaged, as were the Northumberland Fusiliers on the east. The two battalions were separated by the heights of Gamzak San, the highest feature in the area. This was unoccupied by the British, and the Chinese reconnaissance allowed the Chinese to know about the positions of the brigades and the gaps between the units. 
At 2200 hours, a 17-man patrol engaged the leading Chinese troops as they attempted to cross the ford. The patrol withdrew without loss as they began to run out of ammunition and the assaulting troops gained the opposite bank. During the night, the Gloucester's forward companies were attacked and by 7.30am, A Company was outnumbered 6 to 1 and had been forced from their position of Castle Hill. An attempt to retake this failed and the company was now at less than half its strength with officers killed and wounded and they would fall back to Hill 235. This withdrawal left D Company's position exposed and one of its platoons had been depleted hugely during the overnight fighting. The remnants of this then also retired to Hill 235. The Gloucester's B Company had not been pressed during the night, however with the withdrawal of D Company on their left and the Fusiliers on their right, they were now completely exposed. B Company would be withdrawn to Hill 316, 800 yards east of C Company. During the evening of the 23rd of April and the morning of the 24th of April, the Gloucester's B Company would find themselves outnumbered 18 to 1. They would endure six brutal assaults, calling in artillery on their own positions to attempt to break up the last of them. This would have been a hugely risky strategy, which could have resulted in a horrific friendly fire incident. Low on ammunition and having taken many casualties on the 7th assault at 810, they were forced to abandon their positions. Only 20 survivors made it to Hill 235, to which Battalion HQ, the support company and C Company, had already withdrawn to. As B Company fought for their lives, the PVA 188th Division crossed the Imjim River, attacking the Fusiliers and the Royal Ulster Rifles on the right of the brigade's line. Also, the 187th Division engaged the brigade's battalions on the right, whilst the 189th Division kept up the pressure on the left. The situation for the Gloucesters looked dire. During the day, an attempt was made to reinforce the Gloucesters, however this mission failed as the Chinese now surrounded them and the terrain became impassable. A combined force of M24 tanks and Centurions reached a point 2,000 yards from Hill 235. However, the lead tank was knocked out and blocked the route, making any further advance against the heavy resistance impossible. The American narrative of this operation then stated that the brigade's commander found it unwise to relieve the Gloucester Battalion. On their own, the Gloucesters now clustered together on Hill 235 and were under repeated assault and mortar fire. As dawn broke on the 25th of April, the valley became shrouded in mist, allowing the Chinese to infiltrate positions undetected. Continued pressure on the UN forces along the Imjin River prevented a planned attack by the US 1st and 3rd Battalion, the 65th Infantry, to relieve the Gloucesters. Two further attempts by a tank troop to link up with the Gloucesters failed. Centurion tanks would become bogged down, whilst the Chinese soldiers would wheel stick bombs and attack the tanks. Using their machine guns, they would sweep the hull of each other's tanks, repelling sticky bomb attacks. Brigadier Brody left the decision to Lieutenant Colonel Khan whether to attempt to break out or to offer surrender. At 0800, the US issued the order to execute Plan Golden A, which called for the withdrawal of all forces to a new defensive position further south. In accordance with the orders, the Fusiliers, Rifles and Belgians, supported by tanks, withdrew to safety of the next UN position. The Belgians occupied blocking positions west and southwest, allowing the other units to fall back. The withdrawal under intense enemy pressure was made even more difficult due to the fact that PVA forces dominated the high ground along the line of retreat. These were able to inflict heavy losses upon the retreating forces. The retreat was brutal and bloody, with one of the commanding officers of the Fusiliers, Lieutenant Colonel Foster, being killed when his jeep was hit by mortar fire. Major Henry Hoof would refer to the retreat as one long bloody ambush. When B Company of the Ulsters had reached the safety of the next line, all elements of the 29th Brigade had reached the next UN line, except for the Gloucesters. The Gloucesters situation on Hill 235 made it impossible for them to retreat and join the rest of the 29th Brigade after it received the order to retreat. At this time, Companies B and C had already suffered such heavy casualties that they were merged to form one company. The Gloucesters fought bravely throughout the night of the 24th and 25th of April, during which the peak of Hill 235 was briefly held by the Chinese, 
threatening the whole of the Gloucester's position on the hill. This was then recaptured by a counter-attack, led by Captain Anthony Farah Hockley. The Chinese would then launch seven brutal attacks in one hour, in an attempt to take it. However, the Gloucesters gloriously managed to defeat each one of these attacks. Their assault on the hill would be broken up after sunrise by a number of airstrikes that slowed down the Chinese. On Hill 235, the Gloucesters had very little ammunition. They received permission to attempt to break out at 0605. Lieutenant Colonel Khan had no choice but to leave the wounded, with estimates of around 100 soldiers left on the hill. The survivors then split up into small groups and attempted to evade the Chinese surrounding them. Only 63 men would make it back to the line of retreat. The Gloucester's stand plugged a large gap in the 29th Brigade's front, which would have otherwise left the flanks vulnerable. The brigade however lost a quarter of its strength, suffering 1,091 casualties, including 622 of the Gloucesters. The US had lost 1,500 men, the South Koreans 8,000 and other UN forces around 1,000 men. The Chinese casualties, however, were estimated at between 15,000 to 70,000. Many of the soldiers who were captured would become prisoners of war and would endure the hardships of being a POW in horrible conditions. General James Fleet, a commander of the US 8th Army, described the Gloucester's stand as the most outstanding example of unit bravery in modern war. General Ridgway, the commander-in-chief of the UN forces in Korea, would write the loss of 622 officers and men save many times that number. Brigadier Thomas Brody would christen the regiment the Glorious Gloucesters, which would be repeated in headlines in the newspapers. Hill 235 would also become known as Gloucester Hill, and in 1957, the Gloucester Valley Battle Monument was built for their heroism at Imjin River. The Gloucesters were awarded two of the seven Victoria Crosses that they and their predecessors had been awarded throughout their long history. Lieutenant Colonel Khan, who commanded the battalion, would be awarded the Victoria Cross and also the US Army's Distinguished Service Cross. Also Lieutenant Curtis, who had sadly recently learnt of his wife's death and who died in a lone counter-attack on enemy machine guns, was posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross. The stand made by the Glorious Gloucesters has gone down in military history as one of the greatest acts of bravery ever made. The story of the Battle of Imjin River is a remarkable one, and one which should never be forgotten. Thank you once again for watching. To support the channel, please subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching.